So my name is Padraig Cantal Murphy and I'm a lecturer in engineering at University College Cork and this is how I teach. So my philosophy to teaching and learning is based on three simple pillars. I believe that learning should be centered not on the content or the teacher but on the student. Uh, as an engineer I believe that technology can help us in achieving that goal. And finally I believe that we learn better when we listen to and when we work with people from different disciplines. So this year I was coordinator for four independent modules across two semesters and seven degree programs right across UCC. Electrical and Electronic Systems is an introductory first year module which introduces students across all four undergraduate engineering programs to the fundamentals of electronics and this year's class comprised 58 students and was co-taught with my colleague Dr. Alan Morrison who designed and taught the laboratory sessions which are critical to the module's delivery. Linear and non-linear circuit analysis are sister modules delivered across two semesters to second year undergraduate students in energy and electrical engineering and these two modules build upon the core concepts of year one to look at circuit analysis in the time and frequency domains across both linear devices like resistors, inductors and capacitors as well as non-linear devices such as diodes, operational amplifiers and transistors. And my final responsibility is biomedical design. This is an interdisciplinary module bringing together 30 students across undergraduate medicine, civil engineering and electrical students, as well as postgraduate students from mechanical engineering and graduate entry medicine. And we paired these students in the interdisciplinary environment with a senior clinical mentor and enabled them to solve real life clinical problems while retaining all of the support structure of the academic environment. Now, the first pillar of this philosophy is student-centered learning. Now what that means in reality is students engaging in the learning process. Now for me that's best achieved through interactive lecturing, filling in the missing sections in the student's course reader as we move through the lecture materials. Now the student is continually reinforcing what they are learning through listening but also through writing and what I do in lecture is I like to ask questions, so I like the student to help me to fill in the missing parts of the lecture notes and without embarrassing anybody we all learn together. Now in particular the advantage of this approach is that it allows me to see where students are having difficulty with any concept or learning outcome and we can address this in real time within the lecture The context. gratifying thing is that Students are happy with how these lectures are being delivered, uh, they feel engaged in the learning process and hopefully when it comes to exam time they can perform to the best of their ability based on a well organised and delivered module. So the second pillar I refer to is technology enhanced learning. Now I believe that Students learn better when the material is presented beautifully and where possible I use a latex typeface to create a complete course reader for all my modules and this is the student's bible essentially for the semester. They receive it in the first week and it contains all of the lecture materials, tutorials, laboratory sessions as well as a schedule of lectures and deadlines and as the semester progresses each student completes the course reader notes to create their own personal textbook and in lecture I use a combination of a touchscreen tablet and freely available Android applications to interactively uh, complete the lecture notes, beginning each session with a review of course uh, core concepts and then allowing the students to create the course reader which is uniquely theirs but maintains all of the content which is core to the module delivery. In order to access these videos, I've created a free web-based uh, interface for the students, so the student can access the module material across any platform, uh, a mobile device, so whether it's on the bus home on Friday or the night before the finals, the students can concentrate on understanding engineering, they don't need to worry about passwords, Started, logins, so proprietary software, and to me, we this is what technology sir? should be enabling. The final pillar is interdisciplinary learning and this is something that I believe passionately in. So teaching across seven degree programs at UCC has 
taught me that students, and in particular engineering students, are often better motivated by problems and their peers in other disciplines than within their own field. And I think this is best exemplified by the biomedical design module, which we've been delivering now at UCC for five years. So here's a short video clip which I've prepared to explain the concept behind the module for a recent European funding award which we received. Biomedical design as it exists at UCC is a concept where we place interdisciplinary teams of students, place them with a clinical mentor, consultant level physician, to solve a real clinical problem over the course of a single semester. Now, similar programs exist around the world. What makes what we're doing at Cork quite different is two um, particular aspects. The first is we don't just give the students a problem and tell them okay you go solve the problem. We give them a methodology, a toolbox by which they can actually uh, come by the solution and that's the theory of inventive problem solving or TRIZ which my colleague John McSweeney does a fabulous job in imparting. The second respect in which we differ is that we don't just place engineers in the team, we embed or seed each team with at least one medical student. Now that has been um, a very interesting experience from a number of perspectives, but most notably, I get engineering students coming back to me saying, you know, I learned more from that medical student than I did from the engineers on my team. Now, the positive feedback and everything has been wonderful, but the most important thing, I think, is that we've been recognized uh, internationally. Uh, we're now part of the BioApp Consortium, which places us um, as the lead partner with several other European institutions, places like Leuven and Semmelweis and the Open University in the Netherlands, as well as some Irish SMEs, to um, develop a framework which will allow innovation in biomedical devices to be embedded within undergraduate curricula around Europe. Um, we won the UCC uh, President's Award for Teaching this year, and most recently Enterprise Ireland, the state body responsible um, for promoting innovation in this country, has selected one of the projects coming from the module for future commercialization. The theory of inventive problem solving was first published by Henry Altschuler in 1946 in Russia. This is a systematic method for coming up with inventive solutions to very tricky problems. When we apply TRIZ to uh, the clinicians' problems in our, in our biomedical design module, um, we challenged our fantastic medical students and our fantastic engineering students to think differently, to think in a systematic way and come up with lots of different solutions. The way it works is we take the actual localised problem and we express it in terms of TRIZ. Then we apply TRIZ methods to come up with lots of different solutions. And we apply those uh, and, and bring them back down locally. And one of our greatest challenges, of course, was to actually select which of the many, many solutions we came up with would have been the champion solution or the best solution in terms of, of, of prioritising a way forward. Now, what makes engineers different from other students is that we learn through not just teaching, but by doing. And building on the three pillars that I've mentioned, this is the basis for team-based design methods, and this is something that is fundamental to how I teach at UCC, not just in biomedical design, but across all four modules which I coordinate. So confirming this, we've recently published uh, two peer-reviewed journal publications, but the truer confirmation is really the enthusiasm and the dedication of students across engineering and medicine who show that interdisciplinary learning can produce innovative solutions to real life problems. So in order to understand this, I'd like you to listen to James Cunningham. James is a fourth year electrical engineering student and he is presenting his team's design which won the John Francis Burke Award for Biomedical Innovation at UCC as part of my module in 2014. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name is James Cunningham and I'm here today to present to you our product, Nebulate, an efficient <coughs> airways medicine delivery system developed by our team in conjunction with Dr. Rodney Meek. Now, let me quickly run through the topics I'm going to cover today in my presentation. Firstly, we will discuss the motivations behind our design and the gap that exists in the market currently. Secondly, I will introduce the device and run through the key features of our design. Following on from this, I will draw a comparison between existing systems and Nebulate, outlining the improvements that we have made. Next, we will talk about the marketability of our design, a route to market and a pricing plan for Nebulate. And finally, I'll provide a proof of concept for our device 
using a flow diagram. Okay, so let's talk about our design motivations first. I think it's fair to say that anybody who finds themselves in an ICU ward as a patient has reached a point in their health where they are at great risk. <coughs> Mortality is a real possibility and in an area where such high levels of care and high-tech equipment are in place, it is frightening to think that such an inefficient system could be in use. The inefficient system I'm des describing is the current standard for delivery of medicine using airway ventilation systems. Uh, liquid medicine is passed into a nebulizer which turns it into a vapour and then this vaporised medicine is added to the main ventilator tubing where it passes to the patient's mouth and down into the lungs. The problem with this is that it is estimated that currently less than 7% of administered medication actually makes it into the patient's lungs. If we look at this from a monetary standpoint, the Irish Health Service each year spends 106 million euro in medication in this area. Taking our earlier figure of 7%, that means a year on year there are losses of 98.6 million euro. On a global standpoint, IMS Health is speculating that by 2016, spending globally on medications in this area will be over 44 billion dollars. Now, it is my great pleasure to present to you our product, Nebulate. Nebulate aims to set the new gold standard in design for this area of medical devices. It incorporates a number of features that blow everything else out of the water. <coughs> Firstly, we will talk about the Y joint we've incorporated. It attaches the existing ventilator tubing and splits the flow into two, thus giving separate oxygen and medicine tubes. We're using a non-return valve system to stop any loss of medication down the tubing on exhalation. We've added a 45 degree angle joint for nebulizer entry to help promote flow in our system. We've added two points of entry into the mask, with the lower medicine mask having a tilt angle to aim the flow better towards the patient's mouth. And also, we have minimised the dead space hugely. As you can also see, our full system is colour-coded, allowing ease of assembly and switching in and out of parts. Now, when we compare an existing system to Nebulate, you can see the existing system is extremely long, only utilises one path, uses a 90 degree angle for nebulizer entry which does not promote flow and provides extremely inefficient delivery of medicine to the person's lungs. When we compare this to the 3D model of our design, you can see that we have minimized the dead space. We have given a 45 degree angle of entry for the nebulizer to promote flow. We're using a non-return valve to stop any loss of medication on exhalation. And we're also using a Y-joint system so that there's a constant flow of oxygen and there's never any chance of loss of oxygen to the patient. When we look at the marketability of our product, it is classified as a Class 1 device by the FDA in America and a Class 2A device in Europe. As all parts of design are encompassed in existing designs, it is eligible for a 510k application, which would mean a much cheaper and quicker route to market. As competitors price their systems for simple tubing and a mask at 10 euro, we thought it's fair to price ourselves at 21 euro RRP as we feel that the extra features that we have encompassed in our design uh, equate to this. We are able to manufacture for a cost of approximately 5 euros and then we plan to sell to a distributor for 11 euros, making a profit margin of over 100%. Now, I'll prove the concept of our design to you. As you can see, oxygen flows into the Y joint where it's split into an oxygen tube and then our medicine tube. It passes through the non-return valve and is met by the 45 degree entry of the nebulized medicine where it then travels into the mask, into the patient's lungs. A key point of our design is the fact that the medicine gets to the person's lungs earlier on on the inhalation. Now, when we look at the exhalation process, you can see that our non-return valve is stopping the loss of any medicine down the tubing, while the oxygen tube allows the easy flow of, med of oxygen out the ventilator exit. Finally, Nebulade presents a viable, efficient, reliable product that exists in a market that is international, lucrative and ever-growing. Thank you very much for your time. I'll now open the floor to any questions you may have.